This June regular meeting of the Collingswood Board of Education is now called to order. In accordance with the Sunshine Law, notice of this meeting has been appropriately advertised as required by law. Roll call, please. Mr. Craig? Here. Mrs. Caden? Caden? Here. Ms. Mello? Here. Ms. Miller? Here. Ms. Rivera? Here. Mr. Saverino? Here. Ms. Celia? Here. Mr. Stotts? Here. Mrs. Wood? Here. Ms. Henry? Here. Thank you. Okay, please join us if you wish in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, there's no executive session at this time, so moving on to section three of our agenda, um, is there a motion from a board member to move to committee of the whole? So moved. Is there a second? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so Dr. Oswald will discuss um, the planning that is taking place in September and the start of the new school year. Okay, so we started, um, we are starting our planning for September um, in the absence, as of today at least, of, a, of an ounce of guidance from the Department of Ed. So we have nothing from them. What we do know is that we have some guidance from our college and university and community college uh, partners that has been released and an understanding that the K-12 guidance will be similar. So that's what we're moving forward with. Um, we also have um, guidance that was released a couple weeks ago now for, um, uh, uh, I wanna say daycare, but daycare, summer camps, those types of things. So we are also looking at, at those agenda, or those items um, and trying to formulate something. Our understanding is that we should be receiving from gu some guidance this week um, for, for K-12 schools, preschool to 12 schools opening in September. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through what we're doing. Um, our guiding principles right now that, that I've tried to impress upon each of the groups um, is don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. There is no perfect plan out there. Um, nobody has the perfect plan. Even people that say they have the perfect plan at the end admit they don't have the perfect plan. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can um, given a lot of unknowns and, it's, and obviously, as everyone knows, a, a situation that's changing um, pretty rapidly. Um, I'm asking our groups to not lead from a place of constraints. Um, don't go into every meeting with the idea that we can't do something, but instead say this is what's best. You know, go in with the mindset this is what's best and we should try to do this. And if we have things like contractual obligations and um, guidance from the, from the Department of Ed or the CDC or whatever that pulls us back, that's fine. We have to live with that. We have to deal with that. Um, but I'd rather not start every conversation with things we can't do, but instead look at it from the, through the, the lens of what we can do. Um, and it may, you know, that kind of leads us to the next one, which I impress upon everybody in the district um, in the rush to get back to normal. Um, let's not forget which parts of normal aren't worth rushing back to. And there's plenty in education and I think in every field and every, you know, all around the world, around the country that is not worth rushing back to. And I don't want to just keep going back to things that, you know, people, I think it's normal to say, I can't wait to get back to normal. Um, but let's not forget that normal wasn't always so great. So, or it certainly wasn't great for, for every group. Um, so our process here is we have broken up into, as a district, into four work groups. There is a school health and safety work group that is led by Mr. Hurd um, from the physical building um, facilities side, and then Mr. Kulak from who oversees, uh, Mr. Kulak and Mr. Hammer who oversee the nurses at the elementary and um, middle school, high school level. There's an instruction and mental health group that is led by Mrs. McCartlin for the elementary instruction, Mr. Yamamoto for secondary instruction, and Dr. Whitehouse for the mental health side. They're working together. There's an operations and fiscal management group that is Mrs. Uh, Coleman's taking the lead on that. And then there's a steering committee, uh, which is my group, that really is kind of just overseeing some of the other groups to make sure that, you know, group A doesn't say one thing and group B recommend the, you know, the opposite. So there has to be a level of coherence between all these plans and make sure that what the health and safety group wants, the instruction group is on board with and vice versa. Um, also, we're looking at equity. Um, which is, has become um, 
increasingly important during remote learning, and then communications, the communications piece. Um, I will tell you, communications, we did a survey of our staff before they left um, a week ago Friday. Um, so we have some really good data from them. We had over 320, I believe, responses from the staff. Um, we do have a survey that I, that I worked on um, to go out to parents, and that I'm hoping to send out Thursday or Friday of this week. I have a, um, my committee, my steering committee is meeting Thursday morning. So I just want to run it by them, see if they have any input. Um, maybe there's other questions we should ask, or perhaps there's some questions we, you know, we don't really need to ask. Um, so that survey kind of looks like this. You can see that, um, let me go back to the beginning. So it asks for some school and grade level information just so we can disaggregate some of the data. Also, whether, whether the person responding has a child with an IEP or 504 plan. Um, we asked parents some um, return to school preferences, completely understanding that this may be, com this may be totally different talk. Um, and when I send it out, I will explain to folks that, you know, just this is kind of a gut check. What do you feel like right now? And in August, things may be very different and they may feel differently. That's fine. Um, school safety, what types of things do you think are critical? I think the, the, um, the categories are very important, somewhat important and not important to me. Um, we do have data along these lines from across the nation, from other large, really large school districts that have done this. So it'll be interesting to see how the Collingswood and Oakland data compares. Um, we're asking a bit about masks. Is wearing a mask as a condition of your child to return? Will you send your child? And then how comfortable is your child gonna be with that? Um, so we know we have students who are gonna struggle with masks and we know that there's a certain grade level under which it's not even recommended. Um, but we wanna know sort of are parents working with their kids and kids are getting used to the mask thing, or is it still a, a struggle every time they leave the house? Um, then there's some remote learning questions. Uh, communication at the end of last school year, how did you see that? Um, what did you feel about the work? Um, learning resources, was it too much, just right, et cetera? Um, as a family member, uh, guardian, how would you rate the time and effort it took to oversee? Um, the instruction, the remote instruction, and then there's some questions about um, what do you think, if we had to go back to remote at some point in the fall, what's important to you, what's essential, what's important, what's not so important? And I think that's it. So some of these questions may change as a result of the um, feedback from you know, my work group, but I think in general, this will be what the survey looks like. And we're hoping to send that out um, Thursday or Friday with a pretty quick turnaround time. Survey Monkey tells me it shouldn't take anybody more than four minutes to finish this. So um, I have found over and over that when we give people two weeks, they forget about it because they're always going to do it two weeks from now. And we probably get less of a response than just, hey, open this up and do it right now. Um, so that's the survey. Oops, let me switch back here. Um, so the members of the group, we have administrators on each of these teams, supervisors, some teachers, nurses, and members of our um, associations from both Collingswood and Oak Lynn because we know it's important to have our, our staff on board with this. Uh, under the school health and safety kind of umbrella, there are four separate areas of focus. Um, school facilities is certainly one. General health protocols, protocols that will um, apply to everybody, student or staff. Staff health protocols, there are some there that may be slightly different than what we would apply to students. And then same thing, same student health protocols that may be different than what we apply to the staff. Most of the category is gonna be here. So that's that group. The second group is all, uh, has the kind of the, the heaviest lift. So schedules and learning time, that's gonna be a big issue. And we hope to get some real good data from the survey on that. Um, remote learning best practices, starting tomorrow morning, I'm meeting with about 28 teachers, I think it is, um, that our supervisors and administrators have identified as really doing a great job during remote learning. So we're gonna try, I'm, I'm gonna use the word, put together a manual, it's not really gonna be a manual, but just some ideas about um, best practices in remote learning, what worked, what strategies, classroom structures, what classroom management, um, and we're gonna get here into a little bit more about assessment. Um, and then we're gonna look at instruction at the early elementary, instruction at the upper elementary, instruction at the middle school and high school, um, because we know that strategies are different you know, for each of those grade spans. Um, Co-curricular, looking, looking at some co-curricular recommendations, some mental health recommendations, we know that's gonna be an issue. And then special education, and by special education here, I mean the actual team, the child study team, case management, um, case managers, our related services providers, 
in terms of instructional support, that'll be covered up in these groups. So special education teachers will be mixed in here. Um, the specialist related services folks will be here. Um, operations and fiscal management. Um, Mrs. Coleman's gonna look at the budget and any implications that the um, budget has. Obviously the budget will touch every piece of this plan. Human resources, um, are we gonna have to reduce anywhere? Um, you know, or do we have a need elsewhere that we might have to shift some budget money around? Uh, the area of technology, we are looking to purchase a device for every student in the district, both Collingswood and Oak Lynn. Um, we have most of those, but, but not all of them. Um, food service is a biggie, and then obviously transportation. We're very fortunate there in that we don't transport a ton of kids, but we do transport some kids. Um, and I will tell you across the state, this is going to be our biggest hurdle. Um, you have, we, we had a, sh a, a severe shortage of bus drivers prior to this thing even happening. And since we have been closed for a few months, our bus drivers have, I think, figured out, many of them across the state, that they can take their CDL and go work for Amazon and make more money. Um, so I'm not sure how eager they're going to be to come back. Um, and I believe that that's going to be your biggest challenge across the state. Um, the steering committee is my group. We're going to look at coherence, making sure the other group's uh, recommendations align, communications, equity, and then if there's anything in the governance piece, which would be board matters. Um, I don't suspect there's going to be much there, but in case there are some, some policies that we need changed um, or some recommendations we can make at the state level, that'll come in here. Um, the three scenarios we're looking at are the, basically the three scenarios everybody's looking at. Um, face to face, everybody returns to school with some safety and social distancing protocols. Um, I think that that's probably the scenario that's least likely uh, because I, we just can't keep social distancing um, and all those safety protocols. Uh, we can't adhere to those if we bring 2,500 students back across two districts. Um, hybrid model is where we split our students probably into half, maybe thirds, but probably half, and we do some um, instruction in person with some students and then instruction remotely when they're not in school. Um, and they kind of alternate days, alternate weeks. That's one of the questions in the survey, what would work best for families? Um, or AM, PM, obviously morning, afternoon sessions. Remote instruction is we stay remote the whole time. Um, I don't think that that's going to be a recommendation. I don't think that'll be a recommendation, but who knows? Um, and I will tell you in either this case or this case, we have to be ready to pivot kind of on a dime and go remote if we need to. Um, I will tell you today, I received some guidance that came out, not that, it, not that it impacts us, but I received some guidance that came out from the Bucks County Department of Health over in Pennsylvania that I thought was absolutely phenomenal. We have not seen an ounce of anything like that in New Jersey. Um, my fear with guidance that's coming out so far from the state level, the minimal guidance from the state level and some of the CDC stuff is I believe they are raising parents' hopes um, to believe that we can actually do some of those things. We can't do those things. Um, so um, the stuff that came out from, from Bucks County, which after this is over, I'll be happy to share with the board members. Um, that is really, I think, very um, doable. And I think it's the biggest thing that I read in there because I'm a geek is um, that the Department of Health, the Department of Emergency Services group and the school districts got together and understood each other's roles. That has never happened in New Jersey throughout this entire experience. Um, so um, I will send that out to you, but, but I think that that's been some of the best guidance that I've seen. Unfortunately, it doesn't apply to us, but maybe someone in New Jersey will read it and take note. Um, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna start with this group, which is the best practices in remote instruction. We're gonna look at what classroom routines work best within each, in, within each grade level. I sent this group um, three or four kind of research articles, journal articles to just read and ponder, not saying they were the solutions, but certainly some things that we should consider. Um, what classroom management procedures work best? And then what tools work best with each of these groups? Um, and then this is the final slide. And, and I just keep, you know, every time we meet virtually as an administrative team and tomorrow as a teacher team, um, you know, I'm going to keep reiterating. Um, now, everybody wants to get back to normal, but there are parts of normal, particularly for some groups of kids. There are parts of normal that aren't worth rushing, rushing back to. Um, and I will tell you that I'm a firm believer that if we go back in September and do everything the way we did it a year ago, we have really wasted a good crisis. Um, this has been a terrible experience, I think, for most people. 
Um, and when you have a crisis, you have a responsibility to come out stronger on the other side. So I am pushing that and will continue to push that until the very end. Um, I am not sure that I'm going to be able to see everybody, but does everybody, anybody have any questions? None here. I would just ask you to unmute yourself and ask because I'm not sure I can see everybody. Scott, this is Reagan. Yep. Um, can you hear me? Yep, I can. Okay. Um, I was, you may not have the answer to this yet because as you said, there's not much guidance, but I was curious if, you know, we're looking at the different scenarios and, you know, if hybrid is maybe most likely, but if the survey comes back and there's some parents that say, um, well, we're not sending our kid back. Yeah, what, we've already got that. Yep. Do you have any idea, like, is that going to, how that will impact both the families and also the, the school district's attendance numbers? Um, well, again, without guidance, I, I can't right. promise any of this, but my, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that if students are learning, we know we're going to have families that aren't comfortable sending their students back. Some of it's going to be because the, the student has some health issues and some of it's right. going to be emotional. I'm like, it's, it's going to be a mix of that. Um, so if those students are completing their work at home remotely as if as they did this past spring then they will be in attendance they'll be here that day um you know what i'm going to try um you know i i think sometimes as 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 teachers as school people um we we lose sight of the fact that our fa every one of our families are 25 or however many you know the families that represent our 2500 students don't operate the same and you know, we have some staff that really want mandatory attendance at, at classroom sessions. And that's a great goal, but that's not going to happen because some kids, you know, they're, they're not in a place at 10 a.m. where they can do that. Um, right. And we just have to, we have to understand that, that we're going to have to be flexible with that. So I, I do think that certainly is something we're planning for. There are going to be some students who have to, who are going to remain remote by their own choice. Um, so that's on our radar. We'll plan for that. Um, and I think um, the results of the survey will kind of help guide us in, in what direction, you know, how, how robust that really needs to be and how many staff we need to dedicate to it. I'm also sure that we're going to have some staff who can't come back. We have some staff who have right. some health issues. So if, if, they, if the planets align, um, I think it makes perfect sense that the staff who need to stay home match up with the kids who need to stay home and then we have an answer. Um, I'm not foolish enough to think the planets are going to align that nicely, but um, you know, we can, we certainly can cover some of it that way, but that's Thank on our you. radar. I have a question. This is Syria. Sure. I'm just wondering, and it may be a stretch. Is there a district that someone's, it may not, it's definitely not going to be in this area, but somewhere in the country that opened up earlier, that goes to school earlier than us, that we can kind of look into what percentage of their kids come back? Yep. Um, so we, we know that our Southern states, um, open earlier than we do. Uh, some of our Midwestern state or yeah, Midwestern or a little further Western states open earlier than we do. And I am sure that the data we get from them will be very telling. Um, I also, if you, you know, you watch the maps now, those are also the states now that are getting hit the hardest. So the states back in uh, March, April, May that, that kind of didn't get hit so hard are now seeing it. Um, so does that mean that we won't? Um, that we won't see another kind of surge? I don't know, but um, if you look at which states are really showing, the, I think right now, showing the greatest spike, I think you're going to find that it's the states that really weren't impacted previously. So it'll be interesting to see what that does to their school plans. That's, that's a good point, because the states that are getting hit the hardest right now are the states that go back up to year earlier. Yeah. So we'll watch that closely um, just to see what happens. Okay, thanks. We do know from the European countries, um, sadly, I don't know we know a lot, we know, we know that some opened very successfully and really didn't have any spike, and some really had a, they got hit hard. So I don't know that there's any takeaway from that necessarily. So Scott, I just, this is Fiona, I just wanted to make a comment that, um, you know, the board appreciates the diligence of the district to, you know, in the past few months, you had to create a plan and implement a plan with ongoing, you know, guidance and mandates, um, and you had to do what you had to do to ensure the well-being of our students, and that was no small task. And then, no sooner did you barely finish that, then you had to turn around and start this again. So we appreciate 
um, everyone in the district who's involved with this. Um, I do think that reaching out to the public for planning is going to bring us greater success. So I'm very happy to see that. And I'm also happy to, to hear your commentary that any plan we do is going to take student well-being into account. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Are there other board members that have questions or comments on this topic? So seeing none, um, we will um, move out of Committee of the Whole. Is there a motion to leave Committee of the Whole? So move. Is there a second? Second. Clinton. In favor? Aye. 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 And then section four of our agenda is our presentation section. Um, what's listed on the agenda is the harassment, intimidation, and bullying self-assessment score report. Dr. Oswald, who will be presenting this report? Um, this is, so what we did back in August, you already saw this report. So the way this works is um, we collect this data. Obviously, you see there it's from the 18-19 school year. So back in August, Mr. Yamamoto presented this to you, and you approved submitting the HIV self-assessment. The state then does whatever it does with those numbers. And in um, May or June, they send the same numbers back to us and say, now you have to present the same numbers all over again that we've already done. So there is nothing in here that you haven't seen. Um, the numbers are listed there. We're not going to do a formal presentation because you've already seen that. Um, these are the HIV scores that you saw back in August. They get churned through the state government somehow, and they come back to us exactly as we submitted them. They're up on our website um, as required. Um, after that, there's really nothing else we can need to do. So Thank you for that. Yep. Um, section five on our agenda is um, future dates and miscellaneous information. At this time, we have no specific uh, event dates listed, but please continue to check the website and uh, focus on school communications um, for any information. And of course, the board will resume its regular meetings in August. Section um, six on the agenda is um, approval of minutes of last month's board meeting. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So, uh, moved. so moved. And is there a second? No, second. This is Nina. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then also on section six, um, it's just a list of the school business administrators approval of contracts. Moving on to section seven, it is our first opportunity for public comment. Um, please um, state your name and address and keep your comments to five minutes or less. The purpose for this public comment section is to discuss items that are listed on the agenda and any additional more general comments may be made later in the meeting. The public is reminded that attempts to resolve all concerns and complaints should first go through appropriate staff members and administrators. And um, if you recall for the past several digital board meetings we've been having, um, you'll have to type your comment into the chat section. And if it's going to take you uh, some time to type it in, at least type your name in so we know that you are, uh, we know to wait for you. So um, we'll wait a minute to see if there's any public comments listed in the chat section. Dr. Oswald, do you see any comments? No. Nope, not at this time. Okay. All right, um, seeing that there are, is no public comment, um, we will move on to section eight. There will be another section for public comment at the end of the meeting. Um, section eight is our superintendent's report. Dr. Oswald. Uh, okay, so it's 8.01 is the enrollment, um, enrollment report, uh, May 2020 compared to May 2019. Um, up a little over 100 students, 125 students. Um, school safety drill report, obviously we have not been in session. Suspension report, the same. Anti-bullying report, very fortunately, we have not had any um, reported incidents of cyberbullying, so that's good. Um, and then there are no first, so all of those are none, and then there are no first readings of policy at this time. And that's it. Thank you very much. Um, section nine um, would have normally been our student resource 
we have no students at this time, but um, we do wish and uh, we congratulate our seniors and we wish them the best. Um, section 10 is our business administrator board secretary report, Ms. Coleman. Um, yes, this evening I'm looking for approval for your May 2020 uh, monthly transfers, your May 2020 secretary treasurer's reports, cash reports, um, your financial backup, your um, May 2020 student activity financial reports, as well as a listing of the uh, June purchase orders and a list of warrants um, to be sent tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you. Um, section 11 is our Buildings, Grounds, and Finance Committee report, and uh, this will be presented by Ms. Celia, the chairperson. Um, good evening. The Finance, Buildings, and Grounds Committee reviews all financial statements, purchase orders, and warrants on a monthly basis. The committee also reviews and approves all contracts with outside service providers and oversees all maintenance and capital improvement projects district-wide. Uh, this evening, we have a number of matters on the agenda, which I will go through for, for approval of the transfers that were just mentioned, the board secretary certifications of no over expenditures at 11.03, 11.04, and 11.04. 11.05 is the approval of the secretary and treasurer reports. 11.06, approval of sec student activities report. 11.07, the approval of the food service financial statement. 11.08 is the purchase orders. Uh, warrant approvals are uh, agenda item 11.09. 11.10 is the bid threshold qualified purchasing agent. Threshold is increased from $40,000 to $44,000. Um, item 11.11 .11 is the shared maintenance service agreement with Barrington. There's special education placements are at 11.12. Um, 11.13 is the educational staffing services. Um, paraprofessional contracts. 11.14 um, uh, is the return of surplus funds from the Burlington County Insurance Pool Joint Insurance Fund. The year-end reserve deposits are at item 11, set 15. 11, 16 is the shared service trash removal contracts. The maintenance and grounds electrical supply contracts are founded or expenditures are found at item 1117. Item, item 1118, the maintenance and grounds, the plumbing supply um, bids awarded. Uh, 1119, awarding the contract for district engineers to Remington and Vernick. Item 1120, the, 19, the 2019 and 2020 ESEA consolidated grant amendment for Title I is at this agenda item. And item, item 11.24 is seeking approval for items 11.01 .01 through 11.20. Thank you, Ms. Celia. Is there a motion to approve those items? So moved, this is Nina. Is there a second? Second, this is Sarah. Sarah. Are there any questions or comments from board members? If so, don't forget to unmute your mic and announce your name. Okay. And seeing none, we'll move to a roll call vote. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Craig? Yes. Mrs. Caden? Yes. Ms. Mello? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Ms. Rivera? Oh, sorry. Yes, I was muted. Okay. That's all right. Ms. Severino? Yes. Ms. Celia? Yes. Mr. Stotts? Yes. Mrs. Wood? Yes. Ms. Henry? Yes. Section 12 on our agenda is our curriculum committee report to be presented by Ms. Reagan Caden. Reagan, you're muted. Sorry. I moved myself out of the way and then I couldn't get back over. Okay. The curriculum committee oversees and approves the district curriculum and assessment programs, as well as field trips, home instruction, co-curricular programs, and the school calendar. 
Items 12.02 to 12.04 are elementary, middle school, and high school field trips, which we have none of at the time, or at this time, excuse me. Item 12.05 is asking for the approval of the Stockton University High School Partnership Program, uh, which will allow high school students to get credits from Stockton University for classes that they take. Item 12.06 is uh, approval of the 2020 elementary summer learning experience for um, that replaces the summer steam enrichment steam programs that we had in, we've had in the past. 12.07 is the approval of using Camp Sunnyside as our 2020 summer uh, extended school year alternative program. So asking for approval of items 12.02 to 12.07 tonight. Thank you so much. Do we have a motion for those items? So moved. And is there a second? Second, this is Sarah. Ms. Coleman, did you get both names? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, are there any questions or comments from board members? No. Okay, seeing none, we'll move to roll call. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Craig? Yes. Mrs. Caden? Yes. Ms. Mello? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Yes. Ms. Savarino? Yes. Ms. Celia? Yes. Mr. Stotts? Yes. Ms. Wood? Yes, except for the items marked with asterisks where I abstain. And Ms. Henry? Yes. Moving on to section 13 of our agenda is our personnel committee report presented by Ms. Miller. The personnel committee reviews all recommendations for teaching and staff employment, considers co-curricular employment, and considers all professional development opportunities for staff members. Tonight, we are seeking approval for the following. 13.02 is a retirement from Ms. Carol Johnson. 13.03 is a rescinded contract. 13.04 and 05 are New Jersey Family Medical Leave Act. 13.06 is a part-time Ignite program teacher for the 18 to 21 year old program. 13.07 is a high school secretary 10 month contract. 13.08 is a preschool secretary 10 month contract. 13.09 is elementary school long-term sub uh, nurse. 13.10, 11, 12 are summer learning experience staff for the elementary, middle school, and high school. 13.13 .13 is the summer 2020 Summer Shark Story Time. 13.14 is the 2020 Summer Program staff. 13.15 and 16 is the 2020 Summer IEP meetings. 13.17 is the Summer Child Study Team staff. 13.18 is the Summer Child Study Team Related Services. 13.19 is the 2020 CPI Training. 13.20 is the Summer Social Work General Student Support for Oakland Shared Services. 13.21 is the Child Study Team Oakland Shared Services. 13.22 and 23 are summer hours for the 10-month secretaries to work. 13.24, 25, and 26 is the curriculum development for elementary, middle school, and high school. 13.27 is the summer SEL curriculum staff stipend. 13.28 is the summer curriculum staff stipend. 13.29 is the 2020 preschool summer family support. 13, 30, 31, and 32 are a summer professional learning community workshop for the elementary, middle school, and high school. 13, 33 is the summer building best practices for remote instruction at the elementary school for the elementary staff. 13, 34, and 35 is the summer building best practices for remote instruction for middle school and high school. 13, 36 is the 2020 Summer Buildings and Ground Workers. 1337 is the Summer District Drivers. It's the revised list. 1338 is the 2020-2021 Student Nurse Placement. 1339 is the Middle School Athletic Stipends. 
1340 is the high school athletic stipend. 1341 is the high school non-athletic ADP stipends. 13, where are we? 1342 is the middle school non-athletic ADP stipend. 1343 is the elementary non-athletic ADP stipends. 13.44 is the substitute and tutors. 13.45 is a travel expense for professional development. 13.46 is the 2020-2021 contract for Mrs. Coleman, the business administrator. 13.47 is the 2019-2020 superintendent's evaluation. 13.48 is the superintendent merit goals results. 13.49 is the payment for the superintendent's 2019-2020 merit goals. 13.50 is the chief school administrator 2019-2020 professional development update. 13.51 is the recognition of retiring faculty and staff. And 13.52 is the summer hiring and we are seeking approval for items 13.01 to 13.52. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Is there a motion for those items? Please remember to unmute yourself and announce your name. Do we have a motion? I hear that. Okay. Is there a board member who will make a motion for well, so the moved. So I moved, it's Chris. <laughs> and is there a second? I second, it's Matt. Thank you. I think we had some technical difficulties. <laughs> Are there any questions or comments from board members? Do I need, do I, this is Heidi Wood, do I need to abstain from the Oakland Shared Services part? No. Okay. No. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? This is Mary. Um, I just had a question about the professional development update, that's a five-year plan, right? Am, am I correct on that? Yes? Yes, that aligns with the contract. Right, that's okay. So there, it's nothing new. You were just kind of like updating the progress thing? That, yeah, that's what I was thing, reading? Right, with the exception of the first year, the only thing that gets updated is that last, the last box is at the bottom, last couple boxes. Okay, I just, I just wasn't sure what it, kind of what it was. So thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, can we move to a roll call vote, please? Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Craig? Yes, except for 1317 where I abstain. This is Caden. Mrs. Caden, if you're responding, we can't hear you. Yes. Ms. Mello? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Yes. Ms. Averino? Yes. Ms. Celia? Yes. Mr. Stotts? Bill, you're muted. Ms. Stotts, you're muted. I'm sorry, let me try it again. <laughs> yes, except those items marked with a double asterisk where I abstain. Ms. Now Wood? Why you were muted. I vote yes. I abstain for all the items with any asterisks. And I'm also going to abstain from 1347, 48, and 49. And Ms. Henry? Yes. Policy and miscellaneous is the next section, section 14 on our agenda. Dr. Oswald, could you please review the items in this section? Sure. Uh, 1401 is the 19, 2019 to 22 communication plan uh, with some of our communication initiatives outlined within that plan. 20, uh, 1402 is the 2020-2021 superintendent evaluation instrument which is just a, a hair different than the one that we've used the last year or so, a couple of years. Um, so there have been a couple adjustments made to that. 
um, and this is just getting that new instrument approved prior to the start of next school year for the next year. Um, 1403 is a second reading of the policy that I think is uh, facilities, use of facilities policy. Um, 1404, um, just uh, reiterating that there were no HIV incidents reported during the previous month. Um, and 1405, there are no regulations. That's it. Great. So thank you. So uh, it looks like we're looking for approval of items 1401 through 1404. Is there a motion? So move. This is Nina. And is Clinton there second. Great. Any questions or comments from board members? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Connor. Mr. Yes. Connor. Okay. Mr. Craig. Yes. Mrs. Caden. Yes. Ms. Mello? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Yes. Ms. Severino? Yes. Ms. Celia? Yes. Mr. Stotts? Yes. Ms. Wood? Yes. Ms. Henry? Yes. Moving on to section 15 on our agenda is our second opportunity for public participation. Please state your name and address and keep your comments to five minutes or less. Uh, the public is reminded that attempts to resolve all concerns and complaints should first go through appropriate staff members and administrators. Again, if you have a question or comment, please type it into the chat box. And if you could just type your name in quickly, we, we will know to wait for you while you type your longer comment. Okay, we have um, one comment, Mr. Schur, um, is an Oakland resident, 18 West Beachwood Avenue in Oakland. I'd like to thank Dr. Oswald, Mr. Jen, and all teacher, staff, administrators at the high school who cared for the class of 2020 and made their last months of high school as memorable and enjoyable as possible. The event on the football field was meaningful and memorable, and we look forward to the ceremony on the 20th. Um, is the prom on the 23rd still planned? Uh, the answer to that right now is probably no, um, but we have to have some more discussion about that. Um, I will tell you um, that for the 20th, we did have a meeting today about the, the ceremony on the 20th and um, senior parents or senior families will be getting more information, I, I would say by the end of this week at the latest on that. Um, Collins who went above and beyond the communications, caring and senior events. So that was that comment. So um, Mrs. Henry, do you want to respond to that at all or just have me keep going? Uh, I, think, I think you did respond. Okay. To that. Okay. Um, Jen, Jen Rossi, 114 East Palmer. In regards to summer programming, who should caregivers reach out to with questions about Google Classroom? Um, on the summer website that was sent, I think uh, last week and again this morning, there's a tab that says um, uh, contact list. There's a, there's a tab for contacts. It'll be obvious when you look at it. Um, and those folks are listed there. Um, and does the summer program allow for fat district to continue supplying families in need with meals? Yes. Um, that's available at the same time and kind of we tried to keep that as consistent as possible. So that will be Mondays between 10 and 12 noon at the high school cafeteria. The only change there is we don't have um, the transportation or delivery available in the summer, um, but it will be there Mondays from 10 to 10 a.m. to 12 noon in the high school, out, right outside the high school cafeteria just as it, as it has been. And that is also for Oakland families since Oakland is under construction. Uh, we cannot safely do that there. So it's for everybody. That's um, Thank you. Ms. Henry, go on. We have another, if you don't mind reading that for us, Dr. Oswald. Sure, we have a couple. Um, Kate Delaney, 126 East Palmer, in light of recent pr police brutality, let me know if I'm going too fast, I do that. Um, there are a lot of calls for police-free schools. I'm wondering if the superintendent board have thoughts on this matter. Um, I don't know that we have police in our, we don't have police in our schools right now, um, except for the fifth grade program. Um, and I will tell you that likely on Thursday or Friday when we send out the parent survey, um, we are putting together a parent, uh, we are putting together a group as well to talk about um, anti-racism curriculum, anti-racism education, those types of topics. So we'll be reaching out to folks who may be interested um, obviously, we won't be able to invite everybody into the group because it'll become unmanageable, um, but we are going to look for a cross-section of um, families from a cross-section of schools, um, 
you know, a cross section of um, races and ethnicities. And so we'll try to get a good cross section of people there. Um, from the community that will join our staff in a discussion. Um, we are also doing a district wide um, kind of launched by one of our high school teachers, which I think grew beyond what, what she expected, but we're doing a district wide book read um, this summer. And I believe that last count uh, when I checked in, she had 68, I think was the number, staff members who are participating voluntarily over the summer um, in the district wide uh, book read. And it is, um, I have it in the next room. I can't, I, so you, so you want to, so you want to so talk, about, talk race? about race, right? Yeah, that's what I thought about. Um, so that's the book. Um, and I know that some other staff members have reached out to me with some other, um, you know, books that I've read in the past that are really good. Um, so I know they've been, even if they're not participating in that particular book read, they are participating in other, they are reading other, um, related material. Um, go on, Mrs. Henry. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Lori Kerferin, 460 Center Street. Um, with the challenges of COVID, I am not sure if it has been thought, of, thought about, but with the current climate, will the district be looking to include more education about Black history throughout the year and also make extra efforts to diversify classes and bring more diverse students on board? Or more, bring, I'm sorry, bring the more diverse teachers on board. Um, yes, I think the first part of that question is absolutely what we're trying to do with this, um, with both the book read and also the group of uh, staff members and some community members that are going to, you know, hopefully work together. And that'll be a K-12. We're going to have a, a, a preschool group that'll meet. We're going to have a K-5 to group that'll meet. And we're going to have a 6-12 through 12 group that'll meet to talk about those exact issues. Um, and in terms of diversifying staff, diversifying our teaching staff, we've been working on that for five plus years, probably longer than that. Um, we have had some success at the middle school and high school. We have struggled at the elementary school. Um, so if you only have elementary age students, you probably don't necessarily recognize the success we've had at the secondary level, um, which is obviously, you know, understandable. We are going to refocus our energies on the elementary levels. I can tell you this past year, we have, we made three offers, um, to, um, staff members from diverse backgrounds and all three initially accepted positions and then, um, I, I think in two out of the three cases, it was a, I got something closer to home. And the other case, um, somebody kind of outpaid us. So, um, so we are trying. Um, that is something that I have stressed with them for probably more than five years. I'll, I'll conservatively say five years, uh, but it is something we absolutely work on. Great. Thank you. Are there more comments? Um, that's all I have right now. Uh, so as we wrap this section up, if any members of the public have uh, intent to make a comment, quickly type your name in so we know to wait for you. Otherwise, we will move on. Um, and I'd like to thank Dr. Oswald for reading, reciting the questions as they come in and answering them so eloquently. I would also like to thank members of the public for posing these questions uh, because um, there's a, a lot, there, there probably is a lot of questions surrounding everything that's going on in the district at this current time. And so, um, you know, feel free to reach out to the board office with questions. And also if you hear others in the community with questions, encourage them to reach out um, because there are supports in place. And I have a question, is that appropriate? Yes, I was gonna take questions or comments from board members. Thanks. Um, I, I know we got interrupted on our own board book study, but um, I also think there's an opportunity here for us to look at a different book as a board. Um, and we, maybe we can talk about that someplace, some recommendations, but looking again at doing some anti-racism work at the board level with our next book study. Yeah, that's a great idea. We can communicate over the summer about that. And although we don't officially meet in the summer, perhaps our informal conversations could lead to a more formal conversation in August. Um, so we could start September with a new study or maybe a continuation of the other and an additional study. Good point. I would say to that, um, if, you, if you want to start something now, that's why you want to talk about race is an excellent, um, this is an excellent book. And then the, the Kendi stuff is also really good. Um, I think it's a little bit, um, so you want to talk about race is a nice read. It's a good read. Um, it gets deep enough to kind of make you uncomfortable. Um, the Kendi stuff is a, kind of a little bit more heady, I think. So depending on how deep you want to get into it, I think that that's 
those are some good resources if you if the board wants to just start on their own yeah great thanks and i can send you that i can send you um, i can email you those books if you just so you have the right ones okay yeah we appreciate that um and this is a little off top like on uh, off topic this is chris i'm moving back to what i probably should have posed in my committee report i was wondering if beth ann could give us an update to see whether she's heard anything from trenton about our financing as a result of you know the finance the financial situation because of covid and the tax the taxes that we receive um not since our last report the governor's gonna obviously do his budget in september um, our state aid, we will get our June state aid payments. They have promised us that. Um, so we will be getting them around July 8th. Um, so if there is going to be a state state or state aid delay, it will most likely be the October payment. Okay. But that has not been confirmed yet. We're waiting to see when he actually does his budget. So for the 1920 school year, we will be made whole as far as state aid um, in the first week of July. And I've done a cash flow um, going through the summer. So we are fine with cash into the fall. And again, like his budget will be done around September 30th. So there has been talk that we probably will not see, we probably will not see state aid right away in October, but I don't know if that's gonna be one payment or two or if that's just hearsay, because we haven't really heard anything from finance in the last couple of weeks. Well, thank you. Didn't mean to sure. put you on the spot at the end. Oh, no, that's fine. I should have said something. I apologize. No, thank you. Any other questions or comments from board members or the public? Uh, Beth Ann, this is Clinton. Um, and similarly, I mean, have, I heard stuff about local taxes a while back, but I haven't heard much since. Um, has there been any further conversation about local taxes not having to give money to the district or anything like that? No, that that was actually passed and I believe that's still sitting on the governor's desk. The governor has not approved that as far as letting towns um, hold on to our uh, tax payments. So we have, we are whole with regards to our taxes. We are receiving our money uh, timely from the borough. So I guess the governor doesn't want to pull the trigger on that one quite yet, so. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. As I can tell you all good questions and all the questions from the public are good. Um, we are the most, I would say the most frustrating part about this experience from, from our side is every single thing we do is brand new. Um, so, you know, you, usually at this point we can kind of lean back on some of the tradition. Um, this is now every single decision we make is brand new. So, um, there's going to be a lot of just questions though. So, and the questions make us think, so keep them coming. Any other comments before we adjourn? And Dr. Oswald, there's no more comments in the chat. Mm, uh, I think I missed something. No. And then moving on to our final item, section 16 is the adjournment. Do we have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved, Clinton. Clinton. And is there a second? Second, Syria. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank good night. You. Have a good summer. Yes. Bye. -bye. Uh, take care of everyone.